In this episode, we'll be learning about a package called LXML. It was an XML parser that has some similarities to Elementary, although it has many more other interesting little sub-packages within it. I find that it's a little bit better than what is included with Python, and that's why we're going to cover it. We'll start out with something that's similar to eTree, or element tree. It's actually called eTree in LXML. But first we'll look at some XML. If you remember from our previous episodes about the XML parsers of Python, we had some kind of an appointment uh, XML file with various things inside of it, like the begin date, its unique identifier, when you want to be alerted to the begin date, so if you want to be alerted like five, sec five minutes before it or whatever, whether it's been dismissed or, or snoozed or accepted, location, which is blank in this example, and subject, how in the duration. Anyway, there's two appointments in this particular example, and we're going to try to parse it using LXML. So let's open up an example. Let's even get this figured out. All right, let's take a look at this example I have here. I'm going to just open it up. And here we have LXML importing an eTree. A little parse XML function. We're going to open the XML file, read out the XML, and then because it's a string, we're going to use eTree.fromString to just grab it and transform it into an object that we can iterate over. So here we grab each child of the root. So if we go ahead and look at that XML again, we'll kind of get an idea of what's going on. So basically Z appointments is the root, and each child under it is going to be the appointment object. So there's going to be an appointment, and then a, then a second appointment. So there will basically be two, two items. And in each appointment, there's little sub-items, like begin, UID, alarm time, etc. That's why we're going over each element inside of the appointment. So basically it's going to look and see if the element has text in it. If it doesn't, it's going to print none. Otherwise, it's actually going to have the text. So if we run this, it should go through and show us uh, what each tag has in it for its value. So let's try running it and see what happens. All right, so we go up to run, run module, and it goes through and it prints them all up. So each of these have different things in them. You know, the state is none, the location is none for the first one. And then the next uh, appointment is here. We probably should have printed a blank line so we can differentiate between the appointments better. But anyway, you can see each of its values as well. So parsing that was pretty easy and pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and move on and look at another example of XML. So in this example, we're going to look at some book XML that just has an author, title, genre, price, publish date, and description. And we're going to learn how to parse it with the eTree module as well from LXML. And then I think we'll go ahead and look at another way to parse it, or at least parse the previous example anyway. So I've written up a nice little example using eTree that we'll look at next. I'll just bring this one in. This one parses the book XML. It's actually quite similar, but we do a little bit more because this time we're going to create a book dictionary that will hold each piece. And we should probably go ahead and set this up so we can actually look at those books. So let's save that. If we run this, we should end up with a nice little book dictionary that basically they will turn that XML file into a Python dictionary, basically. So let's run this and see what happens. Our module, it prints out basically the same similar stuff that we saw before, but now we should also have this books object. And you'll notice that it creates a list of dictionaries. Uh, let's go through and actually print out. So 4D in books, print D. So you can see that it prints out each dictionary inside of that list and we have different diction different dictionaries for each item. So, you know, the first item was made, uh, written by Matthew Cambardella for XML's developer guide. And you can just see how all that worked. And it's just a really easy way 
to turn your your XML into a nice handy dictionary that you can then iterate over and use how you need to. Like a store could use this to turn their turn their files into something that Python can modify, and it'll make modifying the XML really really easy. But there's another tool that LXML has called Objectify, and that's what we're going to look at next. Where we'll actually go back to that appointment XML and try parsing it with, L with the Objectify code. So let's take a look at that and see what you think. This next example is a little bit more involved. Let's take a quick look at it. So once again, we're importing eTree, but this time we also import Objectify. And I notice that in this case, we do Objectify.fromString. So basically what this does is it turns out XML into an object that we can play with in a much different way. So basically, when you get root, you can do root attributes and get just the attributes out of it. And then you can do root.appointment.begin. So if you go back and look at that appointment code, you'll find out that it does something a bit different. So let's just reopen that real quick. Uh, let's see, test XML. I'll bring that back over here. And you'll see, basically what it's doing is root.appointment.begin. So that kind of extracts that beginner, that beginning code there, and that UID. So it just basically turns this into an object, so you can just kind of drill down and grab whatever tag and value you want out of it. Of course, to actually do it correctly, you're going to want to loop over the children and pull them out, because it, you'll notice that there's multiple appointments in this XML code. So that's why we do this, and it should actually print out something very similar to the previous code. And then you can go ahead and change some stuff. So here we change the begin date to something else. And we can actually print it out and see that it changed. And at the end, uh, if we want to actually write out our changes, we have to do some objectify D annotate because it'll actually stick pi uh, colon pi type and other stuff like that into your XML, which looks kind of funny. It lets you know that your XML has been touched by Python but some you know, other parsers may not like that very well when they go to read it. So I just like to, to strip that out. So that's what the de-annotate and cleanup namespaces does. So anyway, let's go ahead and run this code and see what happens. Um, before we do, I'm just going to explain this real quick. So here we're getting the XML by using eTree.toString. And we tell it to pretty print it so that it puts in all the line breaks appropriately. So that when we go to print it, it'll have, it'll basically look like this instead of all being like grouped together or smooshed together, that or there won't be any tabs or spaces in it. So that's why we do the pretty print. So anyway, let's go ahead and give this a, a whirl. Okay, so it's running through, it's printing out a few things. Had a bit of an issue there at the end, but you get kind of the idea of what's going on. So it prints it out, and it prints out that we changed something else. And then it doesn't like something because I didn't change it to to use bytes instead of strings. But we can fix that if we need to. Anyway, this does this does show you that how easy it is to change stuff in it. We just need to fix the code that actually writes it back out again. So let's do that real quick. So let's look at that look at that output a little bit more and see if we can figure out what's going on here. So let's see. This is type error, must be string, not bytes. So I'm taking that as the fact that this is probably a byte string instead of just a regular string. So when we write it out, we probably want to do wb to write in bytes when we create the new XML code. So let's see if that works. We run the module, prints out a bunch of stuff. And this time we didn't receive an error. So if we go and open up a text editor, let me close out this other stuff so we don't get confused. Oops. All right, so now we have an empty text editor. Let's go open up that new XML file and see if it's what we think it is. Ta-da! So it actually created the XML file that we wanted it to. And it's actually all formatted the way we want it to as well. Let's see. And it also says something else, so everything got changed correctly as well. So at this point, 
you actually know how to use LXML to parse a file, read the file, and even edit the file. So you can create create XML using LXML. You can parse it, and you can edit it too. So you can go out and start playing with this code yourself. It actually has a ton of other features that I would recommend reading up on on, on the packages documentation page because it's just a really, really wide variety of things you can do with this package. And you can play with XPath and lots of other cool things. So when you get the time, I really, I really recommend checking out their documentation because it's really quite good. Until next time, uh, get coding and have fun. Thanks for watching.